Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Bobby Pins Artist Spotlight. Today I present to you Croc So, wait, So Savvy. Um, I'm excited for him to check in and tell us about his latest music endeavors um, as a gospel trap artist. So this should be really interesting. Um, in the meantime, if you're new here, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Go ahead and hit that follow button where you can keep up with more interviews like this. You can also visit my YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash the bobby pin, um, where you can catch artist spotlight like these and more. If you are watching me live, shout out to you. I would really appreciate it. If you go ahead and click that buy a badge button at the bottom of your screen it's a way to support me and creators like me um with monetary tips and donations so if you like what you're hearing or you like what i do feel free to support me in that way and a free way to show love and support would be to share this live right now so make sure you are not stingy go ahead and share this live with a friend someone who likes music someone who loves god and someone who likes trap music and loves god is the person perfect person to tune in uh Croc So Savvy is in the building, so we're going to bring him up. In the meantime, like I said, share this live. Share it. Hey. How you doing? How you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, so go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself before we really get into the interview. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, my name is Croc So Savvy, DMV artist, resident of Maryland, of course. Just somebody who loves music, man. I love the Lord and I, I love trap music, you know. My father, student, all husband, all of that good stuff. Okay, okay. So tell me a little bit about your, your musical concept, your sound. You are a gospel trap artist. That's something I've never heard of before. Yeah. <laughs> well, really, really not even a gospel trap artist. I consider myself a hope dealer, you know. I, I just try to... I try to give hope to the people in the streets, you know, the people who were like me growing up, people who relate to me, and, you know, just try to give my story and hope my story helps somebody else, you know? Yeah. So tell us a little bit, what are some things that you've had to overcome to become the man that we see today? Oh, definitely, definitely. I had to break generational curses. That's That's been the biggest thing, you know, um, that, that like, drug, drugs, of course, that's one of the biggest things. I come from a, a family surrounded by drugs. I come from a family surrounded by just just things that the devil tries to just throw at us. Distractions. You know? Distractions and hurdles. So but but the biggest the biggest obstacle was, was definitely drugs, you know. Okay. And and now we see you today. Um, as you say, you are a father, you are a husband, you are a hope dealer um through your music. Yeah, oh, for sure. So how did you find your way to, to music, to hip hop? Well, really, uh, I originated, you know, being from the DMV, of course, originated from Go-Go. I, I love, I love Go-Go music. Who's your favorite band? My favorite growing up, uh, New Impressions. New Impressions. Okay, okay. How, you, how old are you? You're young. I'm 30. Okay, I'm 32. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> I like New Impressions too. I would say UCB, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. Music. <laughs> How'd you get into it? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Like I said, I was a big No Impressions fan growing up. Uh, TCB, like I was just a big go-go head, period. Like that was just my life. I never really wanted to do rap, period. But then when I actually started going back to school, I went to uh, attended Full Sail University and I got interested into like the music business. That was my major. So I got a degree in music business because I wanted to come in on the management side. However, um, got one day was sitting in the studio with some producers. Just took my pen, started writing, and the rest is history. Uh, they, they threw me in the booth, and it's been over since. Okay, okay. Been so you kind of stumbled stumbled into it. Yeah, yeah, because like I said, being from the DMV, rap wasn't a big thing for us growing up. It was always go, 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 go. But now, you know, it's it just, once I, I, once I got a hold of it, I fell in love with it, and it's been, it's been over. So, so talk to me about how you... Grew up in a certain environment. You were exposed to drugs, as you mentioned. You liked go-go music, but you found your way to gospel or spreading the gospel, the message of the gospel. Right. Talk to me about that decision. Yeah. So, so it, it was inter it's interesting because, like I said, you know, being from like where we're from, because I'm from Lexington Park, Maryland, which is in southern okay. bottom. Like you, you can't go, can't go. Once you get to Maryland, you go get to southern Maryland, you're at the bottom. So it's like it's really no way out. You know, and the only the only the only way out is through God. Just being honest, you know, and just allowing Him to plan us and direct us. 
So just being around different environments growing up, like I said, you know, it's been in, in this environment, it's a real drug infested area, just being honest, you know, and being from like, not necessarily the city, but being from the, the, the county, you know, it's like, that's, that's what they, that's what they consider our, our stumbling block growing, going, going. So moving forward, you know, uh, I, I was real, I was going through, so I was going through some things in life, you know, I fell into depression. And was just fighting, fighting a couple of things, fighting a couple of things. And then, you know, the only thing growing up that really has kept me and kept my family together has been church and has been prayer and has been the Lord, you know. And so and just like the word kind of say, you know, when you get things imparted to you as a child, when you get older, they don't depart. So, you know, I just went back to the Genesis, went back to my roots. And here we, here we go. You know, I just decided to go try to go all in for God and. Of course, like me being a me being a Christian, I, I never really was into like Christian rap or never was into Christian. Yeah. I was like, I don't think that's gonna translate well. I don't think that that's gonna work. So it was it's funny. So one day I got went back to the studio because this this is now me going back to the studio as a as a believer again, and like hey we going we gonna do something different. So don't talking to the producers. Don't look at me crazy. Don't 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 think what I'm about to kick out is gonna be crazy. And we made made a record. I made a I made a record called Big Deal. Mm -hmm. Came up was just basically just expressing where I was at in life, and ever since then, like I said, it's been history. You know. Okay, so talk to me about this name. Actually, let me take a quick second. Lamore Lifestyle PR. Thank you so much for purchasing a badge. I see you, sis, chiming in. She said Pro Proverbs twenty two six. Sure. Okay, <laughs> so go look that up, guys. Um, that was what. Croc so savvy was just talking about. So tell me how. Talk to me about this name. What does that mean? Well, Croc so savvy. You know, uh, I was growing up. Everything is kind of. Am I putting too much extra on the so? You said what? Am I putting too much extra on the so? Oh no no no! You good? I love I love it. I love it. Uh, Croc, when I was growing up, I was a big fan and a big like Lacoste. I collect a lot of Lacoste, and I was just a fascinated with the crocodile and the croc and the crocodile. So I just took that, took the croc and then added some savvy in. Yeah, that's something. <laughs> okay. Crocs are mad comfortable, so I ain't even mad at you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so talk to me more about your, you said you study music business, but that's not the only part of the music industry you touch. You're also a composer um, right. and you, you wear other hats. So talk to me about this diversity, your multidisciplinary. Um, well, well, it's crazy because it's like like I, I'm a student, so it's like once I take once I take a likening into something, I'm I'm all the way in. I got to know the intricate parts. I got to know the details. So once I got into it, like I said, I, I studied music music business, which enlightened me on the management side. Then I crossed over to learning the production, and I'm like, okay, cool. If you if I'm also, I try to be smart with a lot of things, and, and when it comes to when you're an independent artist, as you know, well. As you know, I would assume because I see you, I see your interviews, so I interview a lot of artists. Yeah. But as artists, you know, you don't always have the budget like the labels have. So you got to move and you got to think and you got to maneuver a little bit different. So I was like, okay, how can I better myself and better my craft? So I just started learning how to do the production and working with producers who would teach me different things. Um, yeah, just moving forward like that. You know, I, I'm a I'm a student. I'm a real heavy student. Yeah, always learning, always evolving. I think that's really cool. For sure. Um, let's see what else I want to ask. Since you're from the DMV or whatever. <laughs> um, do you like mumbo sauce on your wings or on the side? I was ready to ask a mumbo sauce question. That was, that's, that, that's a typical DMV question. <laughs> I had to. I like it on the wings and on the fries, for sure. Exactly. You got to. <laughs> Salt, pepper, ketchup, mumbo sauce on it. Put it on there. Yeah, you need uh, to <laughs> um, I don't know. Let's see. When's the last time you felt embarrassed? Embarrassed? I'm like, every day. Every day. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, like, I, don't, I try to be human. I mean, I, I, I always feel like I'm doing something that, like, makes me kind of like, Oh, why? Why would I do? Why? 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 Why, why might I do that? I feel like I'm I, I'm weird in certain areas. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Second guess a little bit. I see Rita laughing. She said, "Definitely put the mama sauce on the wings, guys." <laughs> so shout out to Rita. <laughs> um, let's see. 
where do you hope to see yourself in the next five years post coronavirus? You putting in the work right now. Where do you hope to see yourself? Honestly, just just hoping just that making making my platform bigger so that way I can come back and help the other people who are from my environment and, and just be like that that tunnel so they can and dreams and restate dreams. So honestly, I'm trying to cross over to the executive side within the next five to ten years. I'm definitely like I said, I love the music. I love doing the ground. But I, I want to cross over to, to the ball side of an executive. Okay, I see you. So you just opening the door so you can bring everybody else in. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. Um uh, well I definitely appreciate you checking in with me. Was there anything else? that you want to tell us about anything you got coming up yeah for sure um please please everybody on the lookout for my album that's that's coming out at the top of the year um my existence album this is my debut project um please go check out my video for my new single more that's out right now um you can find all my music on youtube you can find my music on apple music every digital platform that you do spotify just 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 tap in with me also you can check out some of my uh my clothes i, I got a clothing line business as well. i'm ceo of the existence brand clothing line so you can also check that out you can just travel over to my page and hit the link and you know we we just doing a lot of stuff we got a lot of okay. going on make sure you guys tap in croc so savvy that's so with two o's um, right here on Instagram YouTube Spotify run up his streams um he is definitely um, out here getting put in that work with a positive message. Um, respect to you, salute to you for overcoming all the things that could have stopped you. Um, instead, it sounds like it was fuel and motivation. So I'm really proud of you. And it's an honor to have been able to interview you. And I look forward to watching you keep going. Debut album at the top of the year, you said, right? Top of the year, we coming hot. We coming hot. Yeah, so we that coming. means you got to check in again. <laughs> you already know. As long as the door is open, we walking through it. All right, DMV gang. Thank yep. you again, Rita Lewis, for setting up this interview. Um, and until next time, guys, it's your girl, Bobby Penn, with another Bobby Penn's Artist Spotlight. Uh, Tuesday, we got another celebrity guest coming up. I'm not going to tell you who it is. Just watch the timeline because the flight is going to drop. Um, so, yeah, hang tight. Come back soon. Bye.